Hi, this is David Dickens, and today we are doing one of my favorite types of podcast episodes. We're going to do some listener questions. We have three, one from Russell, who is worried about rising taxes and whether he should be doing a lot of work in his Roth account these days. One from Judy, who is just wondering if maybe she's already saved enough in her 401k. And Max just inherited an IRA from his mother, and he's got some questions about that. Hopefully something in here is specifically interesting to you and your personal situation. I'll go get Walter and we'll get started. Do you need help protecting your finances as you enter retirement? David Dickens of KC Financial Advisors has got you covered. Welcome to the Cover Your Assets KC podcast. Hey, welcome to another edition of Cover Your Assets KC. Walter Storholt here alongside David Dickens, uh, your president and wealth advisor of KC Financial Advisors. And you can find us online at CoverYourAssetsKC.com for past episodes and much more information and resources to help you better prepare for your financial future and retirement. David, going to be a great episode today as we answer these mailback questions you teased for us a few moments ago. But before all of that, welcome back across the pond, my friend. <laughs> How was the trip? Why, thank you. Yeah, we were in England for, um, in fact, that's why we haven't podcasted for a little while. We, we missed a week there, yeah. Yeah, you and I were going to do that, and I ran into a scheduling conflict as we were, anyway, trying to get on an airplane to go to Europe. You don't want to miss that. So anyway, uh, we had a great time. It was uh, We were in England for well, 12 days or so. We were in um, Oxford and up to uh, uh, York which was a great town. If any listeners are going to England, you got to put York on your calendar. And then down to London for four nights and then home. Pretty cool trip. And uh, got got to see the daughter, and, and she's doing well, hopefully, and enjoying she's England. Doing, she's doing great. She's nice. killing it. Very happy. She's a So I set the itinerary, but she lined up all the trains oh. <laughs> and a few restaurant reservations. And so she is a She's a pleasure to travel with. Nice. And so that was really fun. We had an amazing stretch of weather. And so, yeah, it was all good. As good as it can be. That's fantastic. Uh, how mad would your wife have been if you missed the flight to England to do a <laughs> podcast episode, I wonder? <laughs> yeah, that would not have gone over very well. <laughs> you, you made a wise choice there. Yes. Good Good. Good job. Please, blow me off uh, any time to, to, to make the wife happy. No problem at all. Uh, we can always do a podcast when you come back. Hey, next time, maybe you can do one from England. I'm sure that's how you'd want to spend your time there. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you know, we're carry-on only, so I'd have to lug some mm. stuff over, and that it's is true. really not my thing. We might have to get you a very simple little microphone you could plug in. You know, if you do a show from England, though, you'd have to do it in a British accent. That would be mandatory. <laughs> Believe me, we spoke with plenty of British accent over I, the last couple I imagine weeks. it just starts to slip in a little bit, doesn't it? It does. You can't help it. You can't help it. I felt the same thing when we went to Vietnam. Um, it, you just can't help it but start to, like kind of go a little Spanglish at some point when you learn a couple of words, you then start kind of meshing in a little bit of that tone into your vo vocal habits, I yeah. guess, a little bit. It's just, yeah, it's pretty funny. It's good stuff. Well, let's get to these listener questions. They're waiting patiently on the sidelines. We've got Russell, Judy, and Max today. A couple of different topics to hit here. Uh, so you teased us Russell's question first. Let's go there, David. Russell says, if my primary retirement concern is rising taxes down the road, does that mean all of my retirement savings should be going into a Roth? And just since it's been a while, David, how about a little... Yeah, yeah. Let's, let's go. go. R-O-T-H. Roth, Roth, Roth. <laughs> it's been a while since we played that. That's quite a cheering section we have yeah. there for the Roth IRA. <laughs> what do you think? Well, so so Russell, it sounds to me as though Russell's thought through this, and he's done pretty well for himself because he's expecting a nice, a high tax bracket when he retires. So, so Russell asked, should his money be going into Roth now? And the answer is maybe because we don't know that much about about Russell. So, but Russell, the things that you'd want to make sure that you have answers to are how high do you expect tax rates to go in the future? And how soon do you expect them to go up? Another thing you want to, you want to ask yourself is, well, what is going to be your income and consequently your tax rate in retirement? So what's the rate going to be if nothing changes? What rate do you expect it to be if things do change? And then another thing that a lot of people forget about is, what's your tax rate going to be 
after you turn 73 and you start having to take those required distributions out of your IRAs. Because I have a lot of clients that once they do that, <laughs> their tax br bracket goes up even further than when they first retire. And then finally, you'd want to look at it and say, well, between the time I retire and the time required distributions start at age 73, is there going to be some time for some Roth conversions that might be a more appropriate time to switch money to Roth than it is right now? So the bottom line, Russell, is if you expect that your personal tax rate is going to be higher in the future when you retire, then Roth is most likely the appropriate thing now. If you have a little window between when you retire and when your tax rate really goes up at 73, then maybe you do less Roth now and more during that window. Mm, I think it's a great question, Russell. And yeah, you're right, David. We can sometimes come into these questions with more information about the question asker than other times. This is one of the, we have a sentence to go off of here, right? So <laughs> lots of other factors that could be involved in here. But I like how you're able to make a lot of inferences about Russell's situation, like maybe being a high earner because he's expecting to be in this high tax bracket. So that's pretty cool that you can hear people ask a question and kind of already start to know where they're coming from. I think that's a pretty neat skill that you've got. Only comes with years of experience and wisdom. <laughs> exactly. And meeting with lots and lots of clients <laughs> and prospective clients. Well, 100%. So great question there, Russell. Uh, by the way, if you want to get in touch and talk a little bit more in depth about any financial situation that you might be going through, whether it's similar to Russell's or you got something else on your mind, you can always talk to David directly by calling the office, 913-317-1414. 913-317-1414 or go online to coveryourassetskc.com. Lots of good stuff for you there on the website. Uh, we've got another question here, David. This next one's from Judy. Judy says, once I pay off my house, uh, which will happen right around the time I retire, my monthly expenses will be about $5,000. My pension, my social security, and my husband's social security will add up to almost that amount. So, I shouldn't need to take out very much from my retirement account. Should I stop putting money into my 401k because it seems like I already have enough in it? So Judy, terrific question. It sounds like you're right around the corner from retirement. And so you probably, that's probably why you are zeroed in on how much you think you're actually going to spend. A couple of different answers for you here. One is if your company offers a match, then I'd say you continue to contribute up to the point of the match. So for instance, because it's free money from your company, uh, your company might say that they'll match up to the first, you put 2,500 in, we'll give you 2,500 bucks. Some companies, you know, put in 5,000 or the first 6% of what you put in, they match. So it's really important to just, to not leave free money laying on the table. If they're gonna offer you free money and you have money available to put into the 401k, Put it in at least up to the amount of the match. The second question I would ask you is, do you need the tax deduction? So if you put in round numbers, you put in 10 grand in your 401k account this year, and maybe you make 100 grand, uh, the IRS is only going to tax you on $90,000. So you've saved 20, let's say between state and federal tax, you've saved maybe 20% on that $10,000 you would have put in. You wouldn't have put into the 401k, but since you did, you got a tax deduction for that. So I would encourage you also to take the, t the fact that you're getting a tax deduction. And then you might say, well, Dave, I don't need the tax deduction. My question is, well, does your company offer a Roth 401k? And if they do, and you have excess money before you retire, I would be jamming a lot of money into that Roth 401k because that's better than jamming it into a brokerage account or a bank CD since the Roth is going to, the, the money you put in, you, you don't pay any tax on that when you take it out and the growth when you take it out. So it's the, it's the best tax-free investment going. And if you have a way to put it in while you're still working, I'd say do that. There's no required distribution once you retire. So check that out and, um, and put that into your calculus as to whether or not you want to stop putting money in your 401k. If they've got a Roth, 
think about doing that. And then finally, I would just, the, the last sentence of your question says, seems like I already have enough. And my question of you is, well, how much is enough? Uh, when you retire, you're still going to have inflation, maybe a lot of it. You might end up needing long-term care. You, me you mentioned that you have a pension and Social Security. Well, your Social Security has a cost of living increase to it, but your pension very few pensions have a cost of living increase. So the amount you're getting out of that pension on your first day of retirement is going to go a lot further than it's going to go 10 years into retirement when inflation has eaten up a lot of that. And then, I mean, generally speaking, for the people that I work with, more is generally better than less. <laughs> so you're probably, even if you don't put it in your 401k, you're probably going to continue to save because you sound like someone who has accumulated a nice sum of money. So even if you don't use the 401k, and if they don't use, if they don't offer you a Roth idea, a, a Roth alternative, uh, you're probably still going to continue to save because more is generally better than less. So congrats on your, what I believe is your upcoming retirement. And I hope uh, a couple of these ideas were helpful to you. Yeah, it's another great question. Thanks, Judy, for submitting that one to us. And hey, great example where we get a little more information about the person in a question like that. Add a couple of sentences and we got a lot more to work with. So um, what a neat position to be in, David, when somebody's feeling so comfortable about their retirement preparation and they start to see how that income is going to cover those needs and expenses and hey, all that hard work is paying off. You just need a little bit. Uh, bring it all together. Bring it home with a proper plan at this point. Make sure you don't make those big missteps that others will. It's kind of like when you're watching the Olympics, David, since we're kind of in the midst of those right now, and you've got that person that thinks they have the race all wrapped up, and they start celebrating <laughs> before the finish line, and they get past at the last minute. We don't want that to happen to any of our, no, any of our listeners. Nobody wants that. Yeah. All right, last question of the episode comes to us from Max. And Max says, my mom just passed away last month. Sorry to hear that, Max. Uh, she left me an IRA with about $350,000 in it. What do I need to know about this account and how should I invest it? Well, so Max, um, inheritances are a great thing. And inheriting a, an IRA is, is certainly a, a great thing as well. One, the first thing you need to do is to roll it into a beneficiary IRA. You can't put this money into your IRA. It has to be a special type of IRA called a beneficiary IRA. And your mother's name will still be on it along with your name. And the custodian, Schwab, Fidelity, whoever it is, will know exactly how to do that without goofing things up. And the, and the, the problem with goofing it up is the whole thing becomes taxable immediately. So make sure you, you um, follow the rules in converting this to a beneficiary IRA. So the next thing you'd want to think about is if your mother was already taking required minimum distributions, then under current rules, you have to as well. If she wasn't of that age, then you don't have to take out annual contribution, annual distributions. But either way, the account has to be cleaned out at the end of 10 years. That was a rule that came into place maybe three, four years ago. And, and so it'll give you the opportunity to, and, and obviously every penny that comes out of that account is fully taxable to you, just like ordinary income. So at your highest marginal tax bracket. So the 10 years gives you an option to manage your tax bill. Let's say for instance, Max, you're four years away from retirement. Well, you might, not take anything out of this account if she wasn't taking her required distributions. Or if she was, you take out the minimum that the IRS makes you take out for during those four years. And in year five, when you're retired, your tax bracket is likely to be lower, at which point you'll pay less in taxes on the money that you ha take out of this IRA of your mother's. And so those are really the, those are kind of the key things. So depending on your needs, your cash flow needs and your tax situation, that should really guide your strategy. Interestingly to me, I have a, a situation that is currently active in my office that parallels this, except Max, this, this particular um, family has, it's two sisters who inherited each a, fi a $500,000 IRA from their dad. And the two sisters are in 
very different situations. One doesn't need the money. So her $250,000, she is going to, and he was not taking required distributions. So she's going to wait until her retirement year, which is still eight years away. And she's going to take it out very lumpy in those last two years and try to reduce her tax bill. Let it grow, tax deferred. The other sister is has done way less well for herself in her life, and she actually needs this money. So she's going to start taking it out. And you know what? She may clean this account out in the first three years because, you know, bills and whatever she has going on in her life, that, that $250,000 is very important to her. So uh, we don't really know your tax situation, Max, or your, your uh, income situation, but you have alternatives. You just need to make sure that you follow the rules. The rules have gotten fairly complicated over the last three or four years with some new tax laws that have been passed by Congress. So I'd encourage you, so that you don't uh, fall into any, any pitfalls here, to get some good advice, especially up front and maybe ongoing as you decide how to invest this money. But make sure you get at least some really good information up front, some good advice up front, so that you know exactly what your options are. Another great question. Thanks, Max, for sending that one in to us. And yes, anytime you're dealing with an inheritance or these large sum uh, of money, uh, you know, kind of windfalls, uh, you know, a lottery or anything else that would fall into this category, boy, it's, it's an experience we m maybe have never been through in life, may never go through it again. And so it's something that we've got to be uh, kind of very careful with, making it the right decisions through that process, because um, you just don't have a lot of your life experience to deal with it versus getting that weekly paycheck and knowing what to do with that or regular payments into a 401k and those kinds of things and these inheritances you kind of get one shot to treat it right and appropriately and so glad you're asking a question like this max and if anybody else has an inheritance type question they're dealing with or maybe it's something like one of our earlier question askers a roth ira pondering that russell had or judy wondering about if she should stop contributing to a plan because she thinks she's already in pretty good shape for retirement these are all great questions. Anytime there's a, a seam or a, an I think or perhaps uh, that's kind of entering into your vocabulary when you're talking about your financial future, those are usually pretty good signs that eh, you might benefit from a financial plan getting put in place, something that's solid, written, and uh, has real understanding to it so that you can get to where you need to be in retirement with more confidence. All you have to do to go through a planning process like that with David and his team at Cover Your Assets KC is to pick up the phone, give them a call at 913 317-1414. No matter your retirement planning question, that's a great place to start. You can also go online to coveryourassetskc.com and interact with us through the website. Lots of great resources for you there and ways to get in touch. All that's in the contact information or all that contact information's in the description of today's show so you can find it easily as well and go through the review and the planning process with David and his team. David, thanks for answering these great questions from our listeners today. Looking forward to catching up with you again in a few weeks. Uh, I will look forward to that as well, Walter. I'll talk to you in a couple of weeks. Yeah, everybody take care. Enjoy your, uh, your day, and we'll look forward to talking to you on the next episode right back here on Cover Your Assets, KC. Advisory services offered through Creative One Wealth, LLC, an investment advisor. KC Financial Advisors and Creative One Wealth, LLC, are not affiliated. We are an independent financial services firm, helping individuals create retirement strategies using a variety of insurance products to custom suit their needs and objectives. The information and opinions contained in this program have been obtained from sources believed to be reliable, but accuracy and completeness cannot be guaranteed. They are given for informational purposes only and are not a solicitation to buy or sell any of the products mentioned. The information is not intended to be used as the sole basis for financial decisions, nor should it be construed as advice designed to meet the particular needs of an individual situation. This material has been provided by a licensed insurance professional for informational and educational purposes only and is not endorsed or affiliated with the Social Security Administration or any government agency. It is not intended to provide and should not be relied upon for accounting, legal, tax, or investment advice.